Hello everyone, I'm Whitney Ortiz, host of the Whole Health series. I am thrilled that Michelle Troseth and Tracy Christofferson, the co-founders of Missing Logic, are sharing here their wisdom and guidance on how to move from burnout to balance, and if we should even consider the word balance as a goal to have. Michelle and Tracy help healthcare organizations and healthcare leaders combat burnout through the power of a framework-driven approach founded on polarity intelligence. The core of their work is leading healthcare organizations through transformational change that results in the best place to give and receive care and for leaders to live their best lives, both personally and professionally. Michelle and Tracy have been interprofessional leaders, friends, and colleagues for more than 30 years. They're the co-hosts of a top healthcare leadership podcast called Healthcare's Missing Logic. They also host two live weekly shows called The Monday Morning Live with Tracy and Michelle and The Sunny Side Up Live Show with Tracy and Michelle. Michelle and Tracy have a combined experience of more than 60 years working as consultants and coaches for healthcare organizations across North America, supporting healthcare leaders as they strive to create healthy and healing work cultures. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here. Oh, thank, thank you, you Whitney, for having us. Yeah, we're thrilled to be here. Oh, thank you. Michelle, can you please start us off and describe kind of the core principles and understandings that are at the foundation of Missing Logic and how you support healthcare professionals specifically within the complex environments of healthcare organizations? Sure, be happy to. Um, well, in our work and all of those combined 60 years you talked about, <laughs> We literally have been in hundreds and hundreds of healthcare organizations across North America. And our commitment to healthy healing work cultures uh, was really just such a strong passion of ours. And what we noticed is while every healthcare organization thinks they're unique, we noticed that every organization had the same um, issues that they were dealing with over and over again. And we started to notice this pattern of what we called reoccurring problems. And, um, and, you know, seriously, what would happen is the organizations would just be dealing with these same issues and we'd see it. And um, it was really getting in their way to transform their organization or transform their cultures that they really wanted to do. You know, they might make some progress, but it wasn't sustainable. So early in our careers, Tracy and I were really blessed to have the awareness that not everything that we experience in healthcare is a problem to solve. And we were introduced to polarities. Now, polarities are two interdependent pairs um, of values or issues that sometimes can appear opposite, but they actually, uh, they actually are interdependent and they need each other over time to achieve a greater purpose. And that really changed how we viewed things and it really enabled us to help the healthcare organization and the leaders within them through that lens. Because the reason leaders were unable to sustain their outcomes was because they were addressing them as problems to solve and they weren't seeing it through a polarity lens or as two different um, interdependent pairs that needed to be managed or leveraged. So the first thing was the ability to recognize that and that truly is the missing logic in healthcare. And thus that is why we named our company Missing Logic is we really help bring that to healthcare and we're very intentionally focused on bringing this awareness to leaders because it is a key competency um, to stop wasting time, money and resources over and over again. And to help with that, um, Tracy and I developed a framework called the Healthy Healing Organization or H2O framework. And um, that really helps leaders learn about polarity intelligence, adapt it into their own way of thinking and being within their organizations, help them personally. And ultimately, Whitney, that is what leads to um, creating uh, the best places to give and receive care. I love how you frame it all and the use of H2O being a basic need, right? And so as you're working with healthcare leaders and healthcare organizations and really identifying this as a core need that we have as humans. Yeah. 
And Tracy, if I may transition to you here, what do you sure. believe are the key factors that make a healthcare environment a positive work environment for those who are there? Sure. Oh yeah, that's an awesome question. So it, I, everything starts with the people. At the heart of every organization are the people that work there, right? That engage in that environment. And so what we know is that transformation starts at the individual level. And the individuals in the organization need to kind of be prepared for the transformation. So we really like to look at the core values of the individuals and the organization needs to be alignment, the principles that guide them in their work every day in that environment. Um, we also think about their development, personal and professional development. And we start with the leaders because we believe the leaders are the linchpin, the kingpin in the organization. And so we work with them initially to, so that they can role model, right? The behaviors, the principles, the values of a healthy organization. So it starts with the people. Another element that we really believe is it's the depth of connection of those individuals in that organization that really enhance the culture and support, you know, a healthy healing work culture. So it's about that connection and what helps that connection is healthy relationships and dialogue or healthy communication. And that's not something that just happens. Most of us aren't trained, right, to be in healthy relationships, partnering relationships, and we don't always get communication skills either, right, <laughs> as we're growing up. So these are skills we acquire. That's why it's a part of our framework and it's important and they have to be practiced. In every single interaction, they have to be practiced in the meetings, right? And in um, just their interactions with each other in a lot of different ways. And then the other element here too is to really think about um, the processes, the infrastructures, the tools that are leveraged in an organization because they can either inhibit or enhance mm -hmm. that culture and the relationships and the ability to communicate, right? So we really take a look at those types of things. As an example, you know, we like to say, what kind of infrastructures do you have to bring the people together to work on creating a healthy work environment, right? To address the challenges in the organization. How do you bring them together? What infrastructures? Does that support partnering relationships? Does it enhance the relationships between leaders and staff? between different members of the staff? Does it support interprofessional collaboration or does it support siloed work? So that's just an example of um, kind of an infrastructure we might look at. It sounds like really bringing the human back into <laughs> the picture even more, where yeah. it's not just needing to make the quick decisions and operating in a very intense context. It's really recognizing again that it's all human beings and to be able to treat others with that kindness and the care, empathy, compassion, as they also give it to themselves. You enable this through the framework and the, you know, concrete working with the leaders and that there are the champions too of this, right? As the way of being within this kind of complex system. We were fortunate, Michelle and I, early on in our careers to work in an environment that embraced this kind of approach. Mm -hmm. And it, it made a significant difference. And we had the opportunity to work with other healthcare organizations that implemented these pieces, you know, these processes and tools and just these values and principles. And we could tell, you know, you could tell when you walk into an organization, if it's a healthy organization, mm -hmm. just because of those connections and the mm -hmm. people we could tell right away we were in a good place or a challenging place. Mm -hmm. It's really like a feeling, right? You can you yeah. can sense the, the that connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The energy that mm -hmm. the organization emits, right? And if we can feel it, patients <laughs> <other people. laughs> Exactly. And Michelle, if I may transition back to you, how are you both really helping the healthcare leaders who are within these kind of complex environments address chronic challenges that they face? Like the hard, really well, old systems, old yeah. approaches. Well, like I said, we've been around the block <laughs> a few times. 
And one of the things when Tracy and I started Missing Logic, we are very committed to measurement and outcomes. So one of the first things we did when we established the H2O framework is we identified um, different diagnostic variables for organizations to measure, monitor over time. And again, these are the same. We all deal with them. They're not unique. Um, so it's really important if we're going to improve healthcare as a whole that we that we really pay attention to these and we actually um, measure the outcomes related to it. And that's really what's going to get us to sustainable outcomes and really create this personal well-being and positive work environments and ultimately lead to the best places to give and receive care. So I'll just give you a couple examples, Whitney, of some of those variables that we measure. Um, margin emission is something every healthcare organization has to manage. It's not an either or, it's a both and. And it can cause a lot of tension in the organization depending on where they sit. And so we actually help them measure that. And then um, another one that you just brought up that I wanted to highlight is productivity and relationships, bringing the human side back in. Healthcare is not all about tasks and productivity. In fact, there's a real negative consequence if we make it too much like that. So how do we, how do we uh, monitor and measure productivity and relationships within the organization? And then another uh, one that we, that we uh, look at and measure is the patient experience and the clinician experience. So Tracy and I always like to use that particular one as an example because in our country, we, it was under a spotlight for years. And if this doesn't make you see the missing logic, we don't know what will. But back uh, many years ago now, the Institute of Healthcare Improvement or the IHI came out with what they called the triple aim. And it was a framework to help organizations you know, focus on three aims. And one of them was patient experience but it was to the neglect of clinician experience. So for eight years, this framework spread and it had good intentions. There's nothing that we wanna say negative about it, but what it brought light to was because there was no focus on the clinician, eight years later, we were in a national crisis of clinician burnout. So there's a lesson there and we don't want people to miss it. So when we work with healthcare organizations, we really bring that forward um, to say, let's not just look at having the positive best outcomes we can for your, the patients in your organization. But at the same time, we have to look at the clinicians. And then what we do with the H2O framework and our methodologies is we actually help them with a dual action strategy. What are the action steps they need to take to improve patient experience? What are the action steps at the same time do they need to do to improve the uh, clinician experience? And that, again, is where the success sits. And then we can actually engage in dialogue with the leaders and even you know, all the way through the point of care clinicians too on how are you gonna know? How are you gonna know if you're overemphasizing one at the neglect of the other? And we help them identify the early warning signs. And that really enables organizations as big as they are, as complex as they are, to recognize by looking at data and what they've already identified when they may need to course correct. And that's what, prevents them from really getting into uh, bad outcomes or outcomes that aren't sustainable. And when you work with a new client, whether it's a hospital or a healthcare system as a whole or some individual leaders within health systems, do you often bring in examples of what has worked well, like some case studies, some best practices or emerging good practice to offer replicable perhaps solutions for some of the core common challenges that many health organizations have been experiencing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tracy and I are big believers of don't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> I mean, if it's worked for another organization, then let's take a look at it, right? And there's a lot in it. It may or may not work for the organization, but that's such a great point. We kind of bring our wisdom with us and share it with them. But then our goal is to build their internal capacity, to have them be able to recognize their own patterns and what works for them and to really keep them on course with the, the missing logic and the H2O framework. And I think, you know, a lot of people are already in action, right? They have things in place. Mm -hmm. I think what they miss is the interdependency. Like, People are doing things to enhance patient satisfaction. They're doing things to enhance clinician satisfaction to some degree, right? Or their experience. 
But what they're missing is the interdependency between the two and that dynamic and how, you know, when one shifts, the other shifts. And so it's understanding that and knowing that the actions have to be simultaneous. Um, and we don't want to come in to an organization and say, okay, you got to stop doing all of this and do, you know, X. It's about what are you doing and how is it working for you? And if it's not working, then let's modify it. And here's what we know about what does work and what you might want to do to make some modifications as an example. This is wonderful. And how can organizations and healthcare leaders specifically work with you all? And how can they hire you, contact you, benefit from your wisdom and your guidance and the frameworks that you provide? Yeah, sure. Well, a great way to learn a little bit more about us is to go to our website, missinglogic.com. And actually we were featured on Advancement TV with Ted Danson, and there is uh, a recording of that on our website and it's at missinglogic.com slash healthcare dash organization. And they can learn a little bit more there. They can also uh, contact us through the website. They can email us, it's simple, Tracy at missinglogic.com or Michelle at missinglogic.com. They can also um, they can also participate or well listen to our podcast as well, which is Healthcare's Missing Logic Podcast. It's a lot of information and really get to know us. I think most people are kind of like, feel like they really know us after they <laughs> listen to our podcast. And of course, all our social media links. So all of them are Missing Logic LLC. And we're on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. So they can reach out in any one of those ways. Wonderful. And to clarify for our audience, you work with healthcare organizations and healthcare leaders who support both adults and children. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, oh, yes. Any healthcare environment. Mm -hmm. Any. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you both for being here and for sharing your wisdom and some of this wonderful background, which is so rich. And I encourage everybody to go check out your links and your sites and your podcasts as there's so much depth in there and so much wisdom to share. If you have any final words, please feel free to share now. Well, I just really am so grateful, Whitney, that you had us on your show. And um, I really like your whole health. I mean, I think that's what attracted us was like, oh my gosh, she thinks holistically. And that's so important. It's so aligned to our frameworks. And, um, and I think your work is just beautiful. I just want to thank you for what you're bringing to healthcare and to women leaders. Oh, yes, well, definitely. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. It's just been a pleasure. And please continue to do your work. Yes. And how you're influencing the providers and the, the organizations. It's just, it's such important work and it takes all of us. It oh, takes the voices you. of all of us. So please continue to bring your voice and, and move your work forward too. And anything we can do to support you, we'd be happy to do that. Oh, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate your collaboration, all the work that you're doing and looking forward to continuing our efforts together in collaboration with others around our country here to help make the overall situation better for the healthcare providers, the healthcare, the healthcare givers, and those who receive the care that we are all here together in caring, kind, compassion with one another. So thank you so very much. Look forward to being back in touch. Yeah, thank you.